So, how long have you been Ant-Man again? Not long. It just sort of happened. I wish I could fight bad guys like you. I seem to mess it up almost every time. Maybe you just need someone watching your back. Hi. Like a partner. Dr. Pym, I actually heard what happened to you. You opened up the quantum realm. That's when this crazy could be ghost who like walks through walls and stuff. Stole your tech. And now she wants to take over the world or whatever. Hello, welcome to What the Flick. I'm Christy, and that is Matt, and that is Lonzo. And it's a brand new week, which means you get another Marvel movie. <laughs> they just keep coming. You get a Marvel movie, and you get a Marvel <laughs> they keep movie. They just pumping exactly. it out. And this week we have Ant-Man and the Wasp. We just saw a clip from that. What is it about? Uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp uh, is about Ant-Man and the Wasp. And <laughs> if you're interested in seeing it, uh, you can go to adamtickets.com and use the code WTF5 and get $5 off your first purchase. Uh, and you can watch this story of Scott Lang, who has been under house arrest uh, following the events of Captain America's Civil War, uh, which kind of a little bit explains why you may not have seen him in Infinity War. Uh, this time, he has found out that he may be able to help uh, Hank Pym and his daughter, Hope, uh, possibly find their mother in the what the comics called the Microverse. Maybe. Uh, anyway. The quantum uh, realm. Yeah. yeah, the quantum realm, which sounds much cooler than the microverse. Wait, so uh, wait, 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 what's it called in the comics? Uh, the microverse. Because it's small? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Because you have you to get who, small to get into it? Yeah. You know who they fight? The macroverse. Oh, I get it. No, but, but did Marvel have the micro knots at one point? Yes. I don't know if there's a crossover there or not. But okay, related. just wondering. Yeah. This was fun though. I mean, the first Ant Man was really fun, and I really liked it a lot because like the universe was not at stake. It was just right. a blast, and it was just sort of a giddy fun ride, and it was cool to see Paul Rudd play a superhero, and they had a good time with visual trickery, and it was very playful as far as things being really small or really big, and you know, the use of perspective, and this does all that too. Like I don't know that this reinvents the wheel at all. It but it's makes fun. it better well, for me because I, I didn't like the first one. I Did liked the idea of the first one. I liked what the first one was going for, okay. but I didn't think it quite nailed the tone. This one I think nails the tone. So okay, so how does it do it differently? That's right for you. Uh, because in the first one, I just felt like that that Paul Rudd had been had had all the personality stomped out of him. I didn't I didn't think he was fun in the movie that I would have wanted in the way that I would have wanted him to be. I thought the the, the film itself was just kind of busy and frantic and didn't land the jokes. I thought, like Michael Pena, a big fan, I found him really grating in the first Ant-Man movie. Mm -hmm. I like him in this one, I think he's got a genius comic monologue that he gets to do. There's, yeah, one good bit with Michael Pena that's edited really beautifully, yes. that's all I'm gonna say. Yeah. So, <laughs> I, you know, I had a much better time at this one, and uh, I, but it's, I, I did, I also kind of realized in this one that these are like the 70s live action Disney movies. They're yes. kind of ridiculous. Yeah, like mm -hmm. I, I said, this is basically the computer wore tennis shoes for the 21st century. <laughs> like, and 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 you know, the the rap against the Marvel movies is they're too jokey or whatever. And if that's your thing, then you're really not going to like this one because it is very jokey and very silly. It but is. Uh, it, I was entertained. I had a good time. It's jokey and it's silly, but I would say that there is a, a more of an emotional underpinning to this one than there was in the first one because of the Mich Michelle Pfeiffer element to it. There was an emotional pull. You're, you're, you see the blank stares no, on these guys' faces. I'm I, trying I, to explain. I agree. Women, like, what? emotion. I, 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 what? I, I, but, yeah, but the whole I, Michelle Pfeiffer thing, like the, the, the daughter desire to see your mother again. Sure, no, Gives no. it an underpinning that the first one did not. I have. think actually the emotional <laughs> underpinning for me was the relationship between Paul Rudd and his daughter. Yes, that was Which I think sweet. played a lot better this time than it did in the first movie. Yeah, and you, you see that from the very beginning, how much she means to him and uh, Yeah, in fact, and there's a, a movie we're not talking about today, but Ideal Home, which opens in limited release and is streaming, uh, Paul Rudd and Steve Coogan play a gay couple who suddenly find themselves having to take care of a kid uh, of, uh, mm -hmm. of, of Coogan's grandson. And again, Paul Rudd is really good at working with children. And he's much better here than he was as former Boston Red Sox catcher Mike Berg <laughs> turned a secret spy and catcher was a spy. Uh, that was last week's Paul Rudd movie. Oh, yes. well, so we get a new Paul Rudd movie every week. Every week. Mm -hmm. I Thoughts, was yes. less wild about this movie because I think it's trying to do, it keeps trying to shift tones, okay. right? Like it. I feel like there's a lot of times it really, really wants to be as jokey 
and as light and kind of fluffy as the first film. And the first the first Ant Man movie is not in the in the scheme of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. If that's a TV show, the first one's kind of a bottle episode. Like it doesn't really matter, right? Like it's a fun movie, but it doesn't really drive anything in that overarching story forward. And this one kind of wants to recreate that. And so you've got these really fun bits with like Michael Pena. You've got uh, the one, the guy who's supposed to be Russian, like in his David l- Dust Malkian. Yes. Yeah, and the whole He's bit great. about truth serum is hilarious. And, and there's a well. lot of really funny stuff going on in this, and I like that. But then it gets into this serious family story that is done well, but I felt like the movie keeps going back and forth and it kind of took away from the drama it was going for, right? So when things happen around Janet being in the quantum realm, there's elements of that that the movie hints at but never really explores, and I was a little frustrated by that. There's, that, you know, the But sto- that felt like a setup for we're gonna get into this more in the third Ant-Man movie. <laughs> I guess, but it was a little too, Obvious. I felt like there were all these callbacks to the last movie that it became a little bit too much. And it kind of, as much as the jokes are funny and mostly work, it starts to get in the way of the drama, that, or at least the emotional heft that they're trying to go for with what is ultimately this rescue story. Um, it is, but at the same time, you have the tension of Ghost trying to right. save herself, too, in the middle of that rescue story, so there's like the tension of having to fight a whole other adversary while they're and on this Walton mission. Goggins as the like oh, right. nefarious sort of mob guy. There's a lot of plot here, yeah. Yeah. a lot of plot, a lot of characters, a lot of going places and doing things and getting the th- you know. But uh, I kind of liked the, how it was just sort of spinning all these plates and ultimately is just kind of doesn't really mean anything. There's well, a lot of gobbledygook, like scientific. Oh, gobbledygook. yeah. I, I, Don't try to follow it. Yeah. yeah. My, my favorite part is when when Scott says, "You're just saying quantum in front of everything." <laughs> Because, yeah, there is so much, like, blah, 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 what are you even talking <laughs> about? So I'm glad you brought up those Disney movies. Look, this is not a bad movie. I didn't hate this movie, but like a lot of those 70s live-action Disney movies, it's kind of forgettable. Like, 10 years, we're not going to be like, oh, boy, that scene in Ant-Man versus the Wasp is something else. Like, yeah, I might. I might with the Michael maybe, Pena you know. drunk history thing that they're doing. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of fun. Also, stay during the credits. Well, of course. Stay. We just, know, just, everybody just, knows. But just stay, just this time, just yeah. stay. Yeah, stay, <laughs> obviously, obviously. Yeah, but stay. sometimes people have to get but up and go to the bathroom. Look, I mostly just like stay. this, it's a good time, it's a lot of fun, it's just, I think the last couple of Marvel movies have had such impact. You know, mm-hmm. Infinity War, I thought sure, was great. No, it's no Black Panther. Right, <laughs> and, well, so that's. It's not trying to be. But, but yeah, be I, think it's, I think it's You're another right. corner of the universe entirely, thematically and, and, and tonally. I, I think they kind of underserve the Michelle Pfeiffer Subplot. I would frankly. like more yeah. Michelle Pfeiffer. I, 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 yeah. I, I will agree with you on that. Like, the, it doesn't have the emotional heft. It doesn't even really have the narrative heft. And also, it's like if you're going to release a poster with Michelle Pfeiffer on it, then we know we they find her. That's not well, even a spoiler. Come on. The, the well, other thing is, it's a journey, is a destination, Alonzo. As I'm always I'm, fond of saying. I'm <laughs> just saying. But if that's the case, at least then give us more stakes, more something. It does feel like they barely have time for her between the mobster and the ghost and the you know all the other and, and the the house arrest and the Randall Parks FBI agent trying oh, yeah. to learn magic and like all these, too. there's right. a million plates Here's, going on. Okay, <laughs> the other thing, and this is my really, 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 really nerdy complaint. <laughs> it breaks some of its own rules within the movie and stuff that got established in the last Ant-Man movie. And that really bothered me. Stuff that really mattered as to how the mm. tech worked. Like, <laughs> That really I wish you guys could see Alonzo's face right now. Because he's like, go on. Because <laughs> actually. <laughs> You're yes anding us, aren't you? You are yes anding us. I was going to ask you if this is canonically accurate, but I thought I would hold back on that because it's only an Ant Man like movie. Just don't set up your own rules and then break them. Just saying. Okay, then what is your harsh number, Matt? Six and a half. All right, I'm saying seven and a half. Seven point two. It's fun. It's fun. Yes. Oh, Peyton Reed directed it again, by the way. We should mention that. He did the first one. He did this one. And I think he's got a better handle on it. I don't know if the last one was because he was inheriting it from Edgar Wright or whatever, but I think he's he's more on his game this time. Okay. So our number is a 7.1. It's at 89% on the tomato meter opening everywhere next weekend. July This is 6th. an early, early review because we love you guys so much. We wanted to get it in your brain and then shrink you down and sneak Ooh. you into the theater. Bye.